Zinger is uh, basically our founder Kevin Zinger's last name. Okay. So uh, it is pronounced the way it is and it's spelled the way it is because it's an old Hungarian family name basically. Okay, and the, and the 21C? 21C uh, stands for 21st century. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and the reason we wanted to do that was just to state that now it's time to change the way cars are being manufactured. There's no more tooling you know, to produce, you know, press steel and, and all that. We're using additive manufacturing. And we felt it was fitting to, like, finally have a, have a production method that is fit for the 21st century. Pretty much all the metals uh, in the car is 3D printed, whether it's aluminium, titanium, inconel. So, I mean, the tub is a hybrid tub made of 3D printed Aluminium, titanium, and carbon, prepared carbon actually. It's a, Not... lot, it's a lot of material science going into it. Yes, extremely. Yeah, extremely innovative use of metals, basically. Yeah, our manufacturing uh, methodology that we use on this with our vertical cell um, has no tolerance stack up. So it really enables us to get a very advanced, uh, high tolerance chassis from front to end. Um, yeah, vertical we... cell. Vertical I've heard cell. about this. I don't fully understand it, but maybe you can explain it to me. I understand, you know, in traditional sense, we have assembly lines, right? Yes. Go from one stage to the other. This is this is not that. Absolutely not. So, starting with the chassis, um, we are um, basically taking the components that we have. We have a robotic uh, system that holds them in exactly the right position, and then we have further robots that come and position the next component also in its exact position, and then a, a very advanced adhesive system uh, that joins the parts. It's a non-design specific manufacturing process, so this vertical cell can build whatever we want it to build. Now we're building this, we can easily pivot to our next model that we're developing, or any other model, uh, without changing the infrastructure or the, or the hardware. Right. So the, the vertical cell doesn't know what it's building, doesn't care what it's building. Right. So there's a huge amount of flexibility there. I was in a position at this point in my life where I could think about what are the most interesting things that I can do over the next decades. And having experience in designing and building cars and in technology, I looked at our planet and I said, the coolest thing to do would be to create a set of tools that allowed small teams to have the power to create even the most complex objects, like hypercars and other vehicles. This was a car that was all really about efficiency, you know, in, in so many ways from the start, because the purpose of this inline seating, of course, is to minimize your frontal area of aerodynamics. And if you drive on the freeway, put your hand out the window. If your hand is like this, it's going to have a lot of resistance. You put it this way, it's very slippery. So you want to reduce that frontal area so that as that object is passing through the air, there's less resistance, which gives you more. You have to use less energy, so you have a much more efficient uh, execution of power. So, and on a sports car, it makes a whole lot of sense because not only do you have that advantage, but you have the driver sitting in the center. So, you know, when you sit in this car, you're looking right out over the you know, big, uh, exaggerated muscular fender shapes. You have a complete command of the road vision. And we pulled the A-pillars back intentionally so that you have this complete, almost, you know, uh, 180 degree vision looking out the front of the car. It's so, truly a fighter, fighter uh, cockpit. It really is. It really, I've never flown an F-14, but this is probably the best, next, next best thing. You but know? You, you take a lot of influence from aviation. Yes, from yeah, and, yeah. And this car was essentially, from what I've heard, models, after the SR-71. Yeah, the SR-71 is probably the one of the main inspiration points for this car in terms of principle and even aesthetics. So in other words, you know, when you see an SR-71 from the top, yeah. it's a very exciting shape. It's hard to believe it's 50 years old, right? Uh, however, when you rotate that shape and look at it straight on, it becomes almost paper thin. There's and, you know, nothing there. There's nothing there. There's, yeah. a, there's the wing section, right? But the, the only areas that have any volume or mass are the areas around those big Pratt & Whitney engines and the little capsule, if you will, where the, where the pilot sits. So we took really the same approach with this. And as you can see, the car you know, has this very slim cabin, but you know, it's still very comfortable on the inside. 
And everything else, really, those body surfaces are really, sh really shrunk wrapped around the tires and around all the chassis components because we're really trying to minimize that frontal area, so to speak, that you know gives you much better efficiency, better aerodynamics. That all contributes to the downforce. It's all part of the story. Of course, my, my biggest influence is uh, Kelly Johnson, who founded Lockheed Martin Skunk Works. Lockheed Martin Skunk Works uh, focused on using very small teams of people who had cross-functional expertise and then building the most cutting edge, highest performance vehicles ever built, which are the SR-71, which still holds all of the records for speed and altitude for a plane. That uh, plane, which only took a few years from kickoff to its first flight, he put together with only 135 engineers. He has a biography in which he sets out his uh, autobiography in which he sets out the principles around which he built uh, Skunk Works. And one of those principles is to look at what someone would ordinarily take to build something and use 10% or less of the people and the resources. And uh, that autobiography, that book, is what I use as a handbook whenever people come in to work with us. I think if you talk to most car designers, there's an, avi there's an airplane junkie deep under the skin. They're not too deep under the skin, but deep down there. Because you know. it's all function. It's right? all function, yeah. And planes are cool. You know, there's the old um, expression, I think, in airplane design. If it flies right, it looks right. And that's really, really true with all those, you know, aircraft that I was just mentioning. And I like to think the same is true with this, you know, this works really, really well from an aerodynamics point of view, handling performance, and, you know, I think it looks right too, you know, it has a good balance. The talent of the team behind it is like, it's just been cherry picking the best people from every field in the industry. Give me so some you, examples for this. Well, we have my colleague John Gunner, who's ex CTO of Koenigsegg. Uh, and before that, Ford GT, right? Yes. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, and several other, you know, great projects, and uh, and we have people, you know, top shelf people from Apple, from SpaceX, you know, from whatever industry we need to get you know whatever result we need in terms of components basically so it is uh, it's an incredibly impressive team for a new brand this is the only way to do it for me uh, where you have a credible product and you're not using like your customers money to do, to develop it right. you know it's already done they can relax they can you know safely put on a deposit and don't feel like they're paying for our R&D, you know, right. so, so that's the whole idea behind it, just to be like have an honest, you know, genuine approach to it instead of just showing something and kind of hope it sells and then if it doesn't sell, well, we'll be gone in a couple of years. That's right. it's the opposite of that. I want this car to be known as something that was the first instance in an extraordinary new development. The ability for small teams to create very sophisticated vehicles using a new set of tools, and this being the iconic design of what that is. Just like for Porsche, Ferdinand uh, Porsche, when he had the Type 64. That was the first iconic vehicle all of the design elements were there, the aero, the configuration, and it created an icon that you can see all the way through the 911 to today.